Good morning, everybody. I appreciate you tuning in. It's an exciting day today. Chair Jay Powell is going to talk today to us, not just to us, but to the world. We will live stream that later on today. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you join me for that. And um, what's with the stop? What's with the no pivot? Well, that's what Goldman's are telling us. And I kind of see where they're coming from. So given that we're about to enter a blackout period, which means the Fed isn't allowed to talk to us publicly, right? Before, that happens before every rate decision. They are going to want to set a fairly tough ground rules uh, basis to make sure that we don't go off on a Santa rally because they don't like a Santa rally because that loosens financial conditions. And that's the opposite of what they're trying to achieve. We have undone three interest rate hikes through loosening financial conditions in the last couple of months. And they're really not going to like that. So expect Jay Powell today to come out being pretty tough. Therefore, there is going to be no pivot talk in the next week or two or three. There's going to be no pause talk on rate hikes in the next two or three weeks. And really, between now and mid-December, the only thing that could possibly shift things are the macro data. So today, according to Goldman's, is a non-event. But um, there are, tend to be surprises and non-events, so I'm going to be listening to it anyway uh, and see what it brings us. So good morning to everybody. Um, uh, let me know where you guys are, based, uh, are joining in from. Um, I see a couple of you guys here from the UK, from Brazil. That sounds very exciting. Um, so we're going to look at some key data here. Before we do that, make sure you get your hands on the S&P 500 benchmark in its full glory. It's free. I put these things out for you to make you better, smarter, informed investors. So take advantage of it, please, because that's why we do this. That's exactly what we're doing, what we're doing here. So we've got employment change out this morning, uh, which is, wow, low, really low. Do you want to see it or you'd rather not? Not bothered. All right, let's uh, let's uh, talk about Winston. Then I'm kidding. None of the following is financial advice, of course. You know that by now. And let's jump straight into the the Wednesday morning data. So mortgages, sort of neither here nor there. We kind of expect that to come down. But the ADP employment change is super low. It's like half what it was last month. What does that mean? It means less people were employed. And that is a good thing for us in this weird world of a market that we live in because the Fed wants to tank the housing market, and that, sorry, the, the labor market. And that seems to be a, an indicator here that they're actually achieving that. Um, let's look at the rest of this here. GDP numbers, corporate profits are down. You see that? Minus 0.2%. We're expecting 3% up. That's a bit painful. So that's not good. Um, the employment numbers, it's difficult as it is to say that that's a good thing. It is kind of a good thing from a retail investor point of view. And then here, PCE data out, which is super important. Core PCE data is coming a little higher than expected. That's bad. PCE prices, the second estimate is still a little higher than expected. But it's less than last month. I mean, you can always interpret these things in, 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 two, in two ways. But no, I don't think it's amazing data. But the employment number is something that's quite, quite exciting. Let's have a look at how the QQQ is reacting to this. Uh, we'd expect to see on a minute chart a little bit of a bounce here, even this early in the day. And no, we didn't get the bounce. I think they are looking at the PCE data. That's what they're looking at. They're looking at the PCE data, which isn't wonderful. It isn't. Um, it's a second estimate for Q3, so it's not the most recent set of data, but still, it's a little higher than we'd like it to be. And real consumer spending, again, confirmed at relatively con relatively high levels, 1.7%. So at 10 a.m. this morning, Eastern, we are going to get the job opening number out. That, to me, is actually more important than any of the stuff above. So that's the number that I'm going to be looking at today. And then, of course, Papa Powell talking at 2 p.m. Jerome says it's freezing over there. Is it freezing over here? Um, it's chilly, but um, not freezing. Lauren, um, I'm in the Côte d'Azur, um, south, south, south of France, sort of a little tiny corner of it. Oleg says key is GDP uh, numbers cementing higher. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I... 
it's old data, right? I mean, by this point, it's really old data. So yeah, they, they, they officially, they haven't got that recession, but I think officially and, and so on. Uh, you're in Girona. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're really not too far away. I can, I can see Italy, literally. That's how close I am. Um, oh, sorry. You're in, um, I thought you were in Girona. You're in Girona, which is apparently Spain. Okay. Wonderful. And how many hours does Powell speak? Powell speaks at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. Uh, so, so check that out. Uh, that's going to be a big, big item today. Now, the futures overall are still looking fairly bushy-eyed and bright, though they're coming down a bit. We're just 0.1% up now on the QQQ, um, coming down here a bit on macro data. That's leading the market, and that's what we'd expect to see here today. If you look at the individual stocks, Chinese equities are flying. Absolute bouncy recovery here. My, uh, I'm just moving my Instagram camera here a little bit. Um, so what, what does that mean? Well, that basically means um, the whole lockdown thing and, and, re and reopening of China and so on. That trade is still very much alive. Xpeng up 10%, NIO up 5%, Baidu up 4%. Uh, what else in tech is flying? Coin recovering a bit. Polestar up 3.4%. Palantir up 7.1%. They announced a partnership today with um, Lockheed Martin. Um, new deal there apparently even lucid's up tesla is up just under a percentage point at one eight two macy's in the green DraftKings in the green apple up 0.4 percent nike up everything is up basically is anything down anything down at all tmc the trump spack seems to be permanently down uh so far losing 0.4 percent uh netflix amazon basically flat as is nvidia uh, those guys make up a huge part of the qqq the nasdaq if you saw my post on that this morning um mike is it 1 30 i think it might well be 1 30 you might well be right on that let me see what the time is uh indeed it, it is 1 30 you're absolutely right i've already put a live stream out for that so join me join me on that um should you leave decide to leave this live stream this particular one no idea why you would you will get to um see me uh, well there'll be a little reminder and you can just click on the little set reminder button to make sure you show up for the next one which is of course crucial crucial compulsory viewing today uh crowd down big yeah i saw that what's going on with crowd um actually we haven't got crowd on our list do we there we go shall we add it any crowd holders in here? Crowd strike. We can add that to our lovely list here. And that's down 17%. They see a fourth quarter sequential drop in recurring sales as clients take longer to close subscription deals. Ouch. Uh, recession is lurking, is further stretching its sales cycle. Shares sank almost 20%. Um, Missed expectations on earnings, missed. Earnings are about online, but yeah, not positive guidance here. And that's, guidance is always what matters. Guidance is really what, what drives the world. So yeah, CrowdStrike, what, uh, Jerome, thank you very much. One of my lovely coaching students uh, saying smash that like button. Um, 290 of you haven't found it yet. Or they don't know where that is. There's like a little thumb thing, but you don't know what it means. You've never pressed it before. Today could be that day that you first do it. Uh, prediction for CRM Salesforce. Not really, Stefan. No, I'm, I'm not invested in, in, in Salesforce. I don't really have a strong view one way or the other, um, other than I'm very cautious with, with earnings at present. Uh, guidance. What is guidance? So when when uh, companies report their earnings, management gives an expectation for what's going to happen in the next quarter or maybe even the next year. And that's really what we look at because we are forward looking. Uh, the market generally looks to the future, not to the past. Um, Smell, smash that thumbs up, says Louisa. It does indeed. It helps us very much grow. If you are on uh, watching us on Instagram, you can... Um, uh, DM me live just down below uh, and that way we'll also kind of have a chat afterwards. Much appreciated. Um, Phoenix live starting at 1pm. 1, 1 yeah, we like to start these lives a little earlier so we can have a bit of a natter about what's about to happen. Um, Mike talking about options probability. You can look that up in the options chain. Um, prop ITM is usually what it's called. You can definitely look that up. 
Uh, welcome there from New York, lapping up all the info. Appreciate that. Uh, wonderful. So let's run through some of that core info then. I've prepared some for you, or Winston has. Make sure you get your hands on the S&P 500 benchmark. Uh, if you're only going to do one thing today, that will make you smarter. FelixSchwenz.org slash SP500. Just go over there, download it. It's free. Now, this here is kind of what worries us a little bit. And what is this? So you've got two lines here. And I'm going to make these as big as possible so people can see it if you're on small screens. I appreciate some of you watching on phones and so on. So there are two things here. That is, this is QQQ, which is the NASDAQ ETF, the major one. And then this down here is called on balance volume. And that's probably not what you're looking at every single day. But generally speaking, if you have a rally, on balance volume is trending up. When you go down, on balance volume goes down and so on. And at the moment, there is a gap here between the QQQ and on balance volume. And that is what kind of an indicator? It's a sad indicator indeed. So that kind of is under undermining our Santa rally here. And if you look at the S&P 500, very, very much the same story. Uh, you're looking at in, in orange, the S&P or is that yellow, whatever that is. This is, this is the S&P 500. And then down here in, in that purple, you've got, again, on balance volume. And again, you notice this gap. That gap, again, makes me feel a little bit sad because it's likely, likely to pull down the uh, S&P. So that's just always something. And, and, and December is a low volume month, a very, very shallow market depth. And that's definitely something we're going to talk about here. And, you know, CTAs, which are the funds that are driven by technicals, they have lifted this market up the last three or four weeks significantly with kind of algorithmic purchases. And, and that's just the way a lot of funds are run. They've had a fairly good year. But look at Goldman's latest numbers. They're not looking so hot, are they? If we have a flat market, so we are bobbing around this 3,950 or something like that, CTAs are selling $4 billion this month this week. In the month, they would be selling 17 billion. Now, if we are going up in the market, say we go to 4,100, CTAs are only buying 2.8 billion or 24 billion for the month. Now, you might think that's a lot, but the trouble is that if we go down, they're selling 24 billion in a week and 145 billion on the month. So the down risk is much greater than the potential upside from, from, from these funds. And that's always something to be wary of when you're positioning, if you're trading or if you're, you know, somehow trying to time the market, not something I highly recommend. Uh, but, um, you know, certainly, you know, we're we are an options trading community, so we, we definitely look at that. So this is a relatively bearish setup. Now, what does a bearish setup also mean? It also means that the VIX and volatility should start to pick up again. It doesn't have to happen, by the way, but it can. Now, what, what does it mean to go up or down? By what, what levels? Normally, you look at two standard deviations, which is, I, I appreciate not what everybody looks at every day, and it's a strange mathematical concept. You can go into your broker and you can open up a Bollinger Band. Um, Bollinger, I'm not talking about the, um, the brand of champagne. If that's what you think Bollinger stands for, then uh, that's good. Uh, you know, former banker and all that. But uh, Bollinger Bands are a fairly rough indicator if it allowed me to open one. Why does it not allow me to open one? Okay, we've got too many indicators open. I think that's probably got something to do with it. So let's try that again here. So the Bollinger Bands here, which are not super visible, can we make them a bit brighter, upper? Can we make that thicker line and the lower one also a thicker line? So these levels here at about... 3959 and at about 39. That's a minute chart. You want to go on a day chart, otherwise, the data becomes nonsense. So, essentially, that 4100 line on the upside, that would be a, a CTA trigger for buying. And on the downside, at about 3700, you get a sell off, an automated sell off from all these algo driven funds that are sort of you know, making the market quite exciting for us. And so, what does that mean? Well, yeah, we would have to go down a bit more than to go up by. So I'm not saying we definitely will, but it's just something to be aware of. If we do drop that low, that there is a significant downside risk here in, in the short term. 
Now, where there isn't a significant downside risk is in our portfolio. Well, I suppose there always is. We're up 131% so far on the year. So um, does that mean there's a downside risk? I don't know. We've done quite well. We, we, I did some live trading on Monday. I might do some more today after Jay Powell speaks if I find the time and there is a bit of market volume. Um, you can learn exactly how I do that. I'm not promising you the exact same returns. That wouldn't really be honest. It wouldn't be legal, in fact. But I can share with you exactly my protocol, my setup, my structure, all of it, how I find them, um, how I close them, what are the rules, and, and every aspect of that. And that's what I do. And we do that in our coaching program. If you go to phoenixfriends.org slash coaching, uh, for that, you need a five-figure portfolio or more, uh, six, seven, eight, nine figures in your portfolio would also do the trick. And um, then you can learn directly, direct one-on-one -on -one access to me and my coaching team of uh, former investment bankers um, and who actually presently, they're, they're, they're still very much trading. These guys never give up the money. And um, if you're not quite there yet with the five figures, uh, check out our pre-recorded course. It's 100 lessons uh, pre of the whole strategy, the whole thing, nothing held back. You also get to watch me trade live every week. So you get that kind of insight into how we actually applied, how we put it to work. Uh, and you get your hands on that felixfan.org slash options. Use the coupon code guarantee. We have a 90 day guarantee on the program before we ask us to complete it. And that will give you a nice juicy 41% off that. So, but let's move swiftly on here. Links are also down below in the description or if you're watching on uh, some other platform, then then ping me a DM and and, and I'll, I'll ping you the, the links here. Uh, this is some um, uh, seasonality. So Santa Rally is something most of us are aware of by now. Generally, the week after Thanksgiving is not, nothing happens. Everyone is just still too hungover to do anything. So the market typically doesn't do anything. Now, from the week after Thanksgiving to Christmas, the market tends to do rather well. So um, basically, to the end of the year, 71% of the time, we are actually up. Uh, on average, we are up about 1.5%. And then between Christmas and New Year, we also are typically up about another just under one percentage point. So that's, of course, history. That's statistics. That doesn't mean it's always going to happen. But I think it's something to be, be aware of, you know, people taking all those all that cash they're getting from their relatives for, for Christmas and they invest it in the market. Um, my relatives don't give me cash. Maybe they should start. Hint, anyone watching. Um, now, this is actually, I thought about making an entire video on this. And I think this is an incredibly important thing that no one's looking at. No one's talking about, really. Why not? Because people are petrified of this. This is the US Treasury market under very dodgy yellow line. Hang on the straight line in here and then I'll make it a bit bigger for you. So this is the market depth of the US Treasury market. What the heck does that mean? It means what's the volume? How many people are actually trading? And if that number is really, really, really low, it means potentially one large trade tanks the market or makes it rallies, right? So it becomes very volatile, it becomes very illiquid. It also makes it impossible for big holders of US government debt to like say restructure their, their book. They might want a longer duration or a shorter duration or something like that. So we're down here at a really, really low level. We were briefly below it um, in the COVID crash. And so that was obviously a super shock. And then we were briefly at these levels and in 2008, remember when the world was about to end and all the banks went bust and all my friends lost their jobs. Um, you know, the investment bankers. I know nobody had any sympathy for them, but some of them had to give up the second Lamborghini. I mean, really, real hardship there. So this is a problem. And this is caused by what? This is caused by what they are sort of strangely calling QT, uh, which is quantitative tightening or money shredding. It's the opposite of money printing. And why does this happen? Well, this is a really important thing to, to understand. So let's just kind of run through the, the numbers here for a second or the, the concept. So the, the US government issues debt, right? And, and how do they do that? US government debt is basically made up, essentially, and they sell it. So how do they sell it and who do they sell it to? It's sold to the treasury market and who buys it? Well, number one, the Fed, number two, China, and number three, Japan. 
And then the rest is, is that. And by what percentage? Well, the Fed bought 26% of all US government debt over the last year or so, give or take. China follows that. J J Japan follows that. The problem is what? Well, the problem is that the Fed is not buying. They are actually selling, which is what quantitative tightening is. China isn't buying because they don't like the administration all that much. And Japan isn't buying because they can't afford to hedge because their currency is so bonkers, they can't afford to, to essentially buy a US government debt. So what does that mean? It means the bottom has fallen out of the government debt market, the, the treasury market. And therefore, if you take into account the fact that higher interest rates means more debt, <laughs> because the US government pays for its debt in debt, for its interest in debt, a very sustainable model. Um, that's a joke. So what does that mean? Well, you get more debt being issued, but you have less bias. So what does that mean? Well, that leads to its supply and demand. That leads to higher prices, essentially, that the US government has to pay for people to take the debt off their hands. And what does that mean? Well, that means the US government has to issue more debt to pay for those high interest rates that they're having to pay. So it's a it's a potentially very, very, very difficult situation to get ourselves out of unless we start printing money again. And I, I mean we in the loosest sense of the world uh, because I'm obviously not American. Um, now, moving on a little bit from the, the potential US debt calamity, uh, US treasury markets freezing over, which means the world ends and um, you know we're all going to run around and scream. Coming back a little bit more to our portfolio. Now, in 2008, big tech lost 44% on Microsoft, 57% on Apple, 56% on Google, 45% on Amazon. 2022, well, let's call it a recession. I think it's a recession. We are only down 28% on Microsoft, only 20% down on Apple, 34% down on Google, and 45% on Amazon. So Amazon is sort of, they've been there, done it, all right. But the other, the other three, potentially, potentially, there's a bit more pain there, right? If you think that 2008 and 2022 are similar. Now, JP Morgan um, woke up this morning feeling a bit grumpy. Uh, JP Morgan Swan Adler, he says, the market is boring and illiquid, <laughs> which is which is quite true, actually. He says, traders have little conviction. Market volumes are 25% down. Liquidity is challenging and buyers remain reluctant to buy. And um, the Apple headlines and so on. So then they're also saying it's unclear what more Powell can say today to scare us. Uh, he's saying, look, Somehow the market is priced in the, the rates, Fed rates levels at 5%. Hard to see how he's going to push that higher in a speech. And therefore, we don't really think we're going to see anything different apart from the non-farm payroll data on Friday, the December 12 CPI print and the December 13 Fed announcement. So he's basically saying, watch out for this Friday. Watch out for the 12th and watch out for the 13th Fed announcement and, and that the Fed, that what Powell says today is a bit of a sideshow. And, and, and then he has some sense in that, but people are still going to hang on every word of Jay Powell. So I think it's still important to look at it. Now, is the S&P actually now stuck in this 3,700 to 3,900 level? Yeah, I think, I think you can make that argument. I think if we're looking at where the support lines are sitting, where the, the sort of Bollinger Bands are sitting, where our support put walls and core walls are, we can't really see huge changes here, but for some macro data to slap us around it a little bit. So if you look at the QQQ again on a minute chart this morning, um, we are still, well, we're basically flat now. So we lost our morning rally on, this is the morning rally part being lost on, on the macro data that's out here, which is, I'd say particularly um, GDP numbers strong, consumer spending strong, uh, PCE data are too high. Uh, but what could change that? It's 10 o'clock. The drop opening data is going to be what's driving the market, I think, today until 1.30 when Jay Powell speaks and then the market's going to hang on his every word. And then we go into tomorrow where we get uh, the latest PCE data for October. Jobless claims, again, less important. Uh, but the PCE data I definitely look at 
And then on Friday, we get the non-farm payrolls. That number better come in below 200,000 if you want a, if you want a Santa rally. If Santa is real, he's going to give us less than 200,000 new jobs created. Um, let me see if I missed any questions here, uh, guys. Do put them in the, in, in the chat. Super happy to always um, answer any of them. How long will Pal talk for? Who knows? Probably half an hour or something like that. He's, he's, he's a man of many words. Yeah, Credit Suisse is still tanking, hey? Credit Suisse, uh, a YouTube user here says, is, uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, coming down pretty harshly here. Uh, down another 1.8% pre-market. Uh, yeah, that story is hasn't quite kind of gone away yet. David, you're watching from Malaysia. Uh, fantastic. Um, eat some ice kachang for me, will you? And um, let's see if we missed anything else here. Oh, yes, euro inflation. There, there is some good news. It's not all doom and gloom today. European inflation data has actually come down for once. Well, it's a 10% if you count that coming down. But it's the first time that we've seen it kind of move in the right direction. This is after the um, ECB, European Central Bank president, yesterday came out and said uh, she thinks it hasn't peaked yet. So this is shifting European markets to think that their December rate hike might only be half a point, not a 75% percentage point increase. So that's going to make European markets feel a little bit a little bit happier, a little bit uh, less gloomy. Um, also, no doom and gloom in our options portfolio. We are up 131% so far on the year. Um, are we going to do a lot of trading between now and the end of the year? Probably not that much, but we'll do we'll do some trades. I'll, I'll have a look today if we can find something a juicy here that'll that'll boost our 54% returns in November so far. Um, you can join us on those live trades um, streams, and you can join and, and learn the exact protocol. Uh, how I come up with these trades and what the rules are for entry and exit and so on to, to manage our risk. For fundamentally, traders are risk managers. People always think it's about finding the greatest trades. It actually isn't. It's also important to find good trades, but the much more important part is, is your risk management. That's how you make money. Uh, so check it out at felixrent.org slash coaching if you have a five-figure portfolio or more, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And um you get to learn from me directly and our coaching team who are university lecturers and investment bankers who've been trading options for decades for institutions. So you get really the inside track here, which is the whole point. And then if you're not quite there yet, if you're just starting out, absolutely brilliant. Uh, I love people just getting started. You're at the most exciting point of your investment journey, really. And um, check out our pre-recorded course. It's 100 lectures plus. You get to see me trade live every week and nothing held back here. The full thing as well at felixfrenz.org slash options. Write down the coupon code there. Guarantee to get your hands on this at a whopping 41% discount before the end of the week. Uh, is it a new Lehman Brothers Credit Swiss uh, says cause here? I think they'll they'll bail them out. I think potentially, but I think they'll bail them out. Because if you don't bail out Credit Suisse, and in a way it has already been bailed out, then Deutsche Bank, for example, will go down with it. And then you're looking at trillions of dollars of credit default swaps, and nobody really knows where the buck stops. So uh, definitely. Uh. Do you prefer options buying rather than premium collection of strategies like selling strangles? Um, I'm, I'm very much an options seller. Uh, definitely not really a massive options buyer. I, I, I do sometimes, like this month, we've bought a fair few options. But generally speaking, the better strategy is to be a seller. Um, I, I apologize if maybe some of this is a little... Um, detailed at times. I think tune in every day, <laughs> Lauren, and, and I think more of it will, will, will come to you. Also, check out on the website. We've got tons of free programs and tons of reference materials that will help you kind of learn uh, much faster. Anthony, what's up? Great to have you on the chat. What are you drinking? Vodka. <laughs> no, hot water. Seriously, hot water. I've lived in Hong Kong for more than a decade, and that's one of the things that I learned is... Um, don't drink cold stuff. It's definitely a bad idea. Drink drink hot water and you'll feel amazing. Don't dumb it down from me. Um, that's that's quite all right. I I I try to I try to like use this little kind of jargon or at least explain it, but I, I'm sure I don't always. So so call me out on it. I'm drinking JP's tear. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, he's not a happy man today, I think. 
Uh, Mike, can you make more money than me on this portfolio? Sure. Look at look at that. When we used an average fourteen thousand dollars cash on this portfolio, so could we do more? Uh, we added nineteen thousand on top of the fourteen thousand. So I think we've done quite well. Um, can you make use a ten times bigger portfolio or a hundred times bigger portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. Nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, Ruda, your grandmother was a smart woman. Uh, where are you from? I'm born in Germany, um, believe it or not. So, but I left fairly early. I lived in the UK for about 10 years and then in Asia for about 10, 15 years. And now I am in a very sunny spot um, in the south of France. Um, so appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't already, of course, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. We're still missing like 300 likes. It's a really hard button to find. I appreciate that. We might want a course on that one day, how to smash the like button effectively. And um, I will be live again today with the Fed speech at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time because that's the macro event today that's driving the market. Uh, Stephen, much appreciate that. You thought I was great in Black Adder too. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's quite funny. Um, some 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 German relatives here as well. Um, what happened to the goats? The goats are well. Um, I've got a couple at home, but yeah, we 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 did for quite a while. We donated quite a few, quite a bit of money to some goat charities. Maybe we should start to revive that again. It's just been a bit been a bit busy, uh, but it's. Uh, I'm happy to if you guys always want to do suggest it. Super happy to do that. Let's have another quick look at the market here this morning. I think we're looking pretty flat. QQQ is basically at zero, uh, and that is despite a very significant Chinese ADR rally here this morning. Anything Chinese is flying uh, as our Chinese markets. But we are being pinned down by some of the big boys like the Netflix, the Metas, who are refusing to move Amazon down a quarter of a percentage point, NVIDIA down 0.4%. So big tech down a little bit. And maybe they saw my chart saying that in the last recession, tech sold off more than it has right now. Um, smash the like button and Santa will bring you a full bag of gifts or maybe even a Santa rally, which would be even better. Appreciate that. <laughs> Christmas challenge. Can you find the like button? Yeah, not that many, apparently. Uh, Jolts will spin up a rally. It might well do, Oleg. It might well do. I, I hope you're right on that. We'll see what the, the data is when it comes in. Are you going to do a quick video on Jolts later? And says Andrea, possibly. I have a fairly packed schedule today, but we will definitely be live, as I say, at, at 1 p.m. this afternoon. Um, but Andrea, we always appreciate you tuning in. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you haven't already given us a call yet, do go to phoenixfriends.org slash coaching for those of you with a five-figure portfolio or more and a desire to become a better investor and make 2023 a year that counts. Uh, by all accounts, it's going to be a flat year, an uneventful year, and that just means traders are going to love it and stock investors are going to rue it. So uh, check it out, Felix Rental Access Coaching. Links are down below. I appreciate you uh, tuning in and I hope to see you later at 1 p.m. for the Jay Power Live.